Andrew, what's the sweat level of pros? I get the media play. I get the energy I just saw from the esteemed politician of the United Kingdom. What's the, the, the sweat level, the nervousness among grizzled pros like yourself? Well, you know, being prepared for this pandemic, having seen the first uh, large number of cases that came into the country, we should have been better prepared to deal with the eventual surges and small outbreaks that are occurring um, uh, now. Um, it's incredibly disconcerting to see the level of cases that are coming up in places, and more importantly, the lack of real responses uh, to get those case numbers down. Um, this is not the way you deal with a pandemic, and we've been prepared not only from our own experiences, but from the experiences of other countries. We know how to intervene here to get these case numbers down. There seems to just be a lack of either political will or personal will to implement those uh, those tools. Okay, I'll go with the personal will, and we've seen some good articles this week showing percentage of mask wearing in societies and all that. What are we going to see in the next week or two? I was ripped up on Twitter, Dr. Pekos, looking at the death dynamics, the first and second derivative of the log path of deaths. Help me here with the death dynamics lagging the case dynamics right now. Yeah, so we know because of the course of the disease, we'll see case numbers increase first. We'll see hospitalizations lag that by anywhere between seven to 10 days. And then we'll see deaths lag that by another seven days or so. What's interesting about now is the initial cases are in a younger population. Uh, so those surges are really coming up in terms of those what we call healthier individuals who may not be suffering as much death. But what we're going to see is now the transmission of virus from those individuals to more susceptible individuals. And that's going to mean that the hospitalization and the death rates are going to increase on an even further yeah. delay. So we are expecting to see these surges in severe cases lag even further than we have in, in the first wave in this in, in the country. And by the time we see that surge, Don't it's going to be almost too late to intervene because of that delay in, in terms of monitoring cases. Yeah, that, uh, that would certainly be a very serious situation. And, but Dr. Pekos, in terms of the severity of cases, is it really true that cases are less severe for young people? Because you see a lot of anecdotal evidence, particularly on social media, of people talking about uh, really frightening symptoms that recur for weeks, if not months on end. Yeah. And this is the important thing to understand about things like when people use things like case fatality rates or hospitalization rates. It may be that if you're younger, the percentage of individuals that suffer those severe cases is lower across the population. But we have to remember that virtually the entire U.S. population is susceptible to diseases, so even to this to this disease. So even a small percentage of severe cases amplified by the entire population of the U.S. turns into a large number of cases. And that's the important part that people have to remember. It's not just about, well, most young individuals won't have suffer severe cases. There's enough of these young individuals so that the number of severe cases is really going to be large. And on top of that, they are efficient transmitters of the disease. So you'll see the severe disease in other populations that we know suffer from severe disease. So this is not a benign yeah. disease. This is not a common cold like virus. Um, the, the severity of the disease is covered with the large numbers of susceptible people is going to translate into a large number of severe cases that we're going to see. Right. And um, on the transmission, of course, the WHO is still looking into whether um, there's airborne transmission of COVID-19. But what about the immune response? What more do we know about um, whether people can build up sufficient immunity to this as we wait uh, for a vaccine? Yeah, so um, with the vaccine trials, uh, we've had some good results, um, still preliminary results, still uh, results off small population sizes, but it seems like many of the vaccines that have been fast-tracked are generating the immune response that we want to see that we assume will protect us from infection. Uh, we still have a lot of safety work to do with these vaccines, and that's going to come in play when we get the larger trials uh, uh, coming in place now uh, into the early fall. Um, in terms of the immune responses to infection, it's kind of a mixed bag. So in the same way that this virus causes a wide spectrum of disease, 
disease ranging from no symptoms to hospitalization and death, we're seeing that the virus also induces a wide spectrum of immune responses from rather modest ones that fade relatively quickly to rather strong ones that can last for at least a few months because that's as much of the data that we have. Mm. So it's, a, again, a big heterogeneous spectrum in terms of the immune responses that, in, that are induced by infection. The vaccines seem a little bit more tighter in terms of their immune response, so that's a good sign.